Hi folks, and welcome to Dad Devotionals. I'm Dave Domzowski. I wanna to talk to you today about a blog post that I saw yesterday on Facebook. And it was titled, The Virus That Stole Pasca. And I found it on this, I found it on Facebook, someone shared it, but it's at this website, ehide, it's E-H-Y-D-E dot wordpress dot com. And this guy, Eric, who is a convert from evangelicalism, was discussing, you know, what it means to him and how hard he's, how hard a time he's having with the, uh, with church not, you know, being held and, you know, we're during the Lenten season right now and Holy Week and Pascha and we touched on this yesterday and, and how difficult it has been for my wife as well. But when we, when I shared this with her, you know, we, we kind of found some comfort in the fact that this isn't the first time that our church has gone through something like this. In fact, at the very beginning of the faith, we see this happening. And that was at Passover. And in this article, the very end, he touched, he, he says this, and I, I want to share this. I'll, I encourage you to read the whole thing because it's a great piece, but this final part really hits home. And he says, I finally, I'm struck by the realization that this event is anything but uncharted waters, meaning, you know, shutting down church and, you know, the coronavirus and everything. As a matter of fact, it's a familiar scene when compared to the very first Pascha, the original Passover event recorded in the book of Exodus, foreshadowing Pascha. Pascha comes from the Hebrew word for Passover. I'm going to butcher this, I'm sure. Pesach began with God instructing his people to shelter in place while a plague ravished Egypt. To avoid the plague, the Hebrews had to isolate from one another in their homes, alone, without the ability to gather in mass, alone to work out their faith in fear and trembling. With this in mind, I have stopped struggling with the idea of spending this Pascha in isolation as an attack on the faith. I'm finding rest in the thought that maybe it is a return to the very roots of the faith itself. Very powerful. And something that I think we need to reflect on as we continue what's now going to be 27 more days or so, possibly more, of um, no church services and of socially distancing, distancing ourselves from each other. And another thing, actually, I found in this article, too, uh, very interesting. Um, in the 14th century, we had to do the same thing where you, Orthodox Church closed services for the Lenten season, and that's because of the bubonic plague. So this isn't unheard of. And in fact, especially given that a county talks about an exodus in this final, this conclusion from this blog article, it really should strengthen our faith because, you know, there is nothing new under the sun, all right, as I quoted to my wife last night. So just take, take solace in that, take comfort in that. And with that, let's get to, let's get to today's reading from Proverbs. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Remember that from the last line from yesterday. A man devoid of understanding sh shakes hands in a pledge and becomes surety for his friend. He who loves transgression loves strife, and he who exalts his gate seeks destruction. He who has a deceitful heart finds no good, and he who has a perverse tongue falls into evil. He who begets a scoffer does so to his sorrow, and the father of a fool has no joy. A merry heart does good, like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. A wicked man accepts a bribe behind the back to pervert the ways of justice. Wisdom is in the sight of him who has understanding, but the eyes of a fool are on the ends of the earth. A foolish son is a grief to his father, and bitterness to her who bore him. Also, to punish the righteous is not good, nor to strike princes for their uprightness. He who has knowledge spares his words, and a man of understanding is of calm spirit. Even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace. When he shuts his lips, he is considered perceptive. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. A fool has no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own heart. When the wicked comes, contempt comes also, and with dishonor comes reproach. 
The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. It is not good to show partiality to the wicked or to overthrow the righteous in judgment. This one line I wanted to point out to you. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. A couple of what we started this podcast with on Exodus and how this isn't exactly the first time the church has had to deal with this. The Christians, the Christians have had to deal with this that our Jewish brethren have had to deal with it. But with this line from, this verse from Proverbs, I'm reminded, let's, let's be joyful to each other. Let's encourage each other. Let's build each other up instead of wallow in the uncertainty and, and, and wallow in the, in the, in the, in the, you know, the, the fear and, you know, the lack and, you know, just the, you know, everything that the media puts out there. Yes, it's important to be informed. And yes, it's, it's horrible what, what folks have to go through in enduring this and unfortunately passing and, and going to our Lord, um, falling asleep on our Lord towards it as well. But let us not remember that for those of us that are still here, we can still be that good medicine and, um, you know, focus on while we can't be at the hospital of the church, we can still seek the physician. So let's remember that. God bless you all and have a wonderful weekend and make it joyous and don't forget your daily prayers in this trying time and find a service that you can attend online. Okay. God bless you. I look forward to speaking with you on Monday and take care.